Can you talk about how you originally hooked up with, with Death Row and, and what time frame? My initial, my initial involvement with Death Row was um, Reggie Wright era, we're talking. Okay. 2000, 99, 2000 maybe. Yeah. Pool was already over there working at security. Um, they had them stationed in uh, Tarzana, mm -hmm. uh, Pool, the Rillis. And it was not one of the producers, I forget his name. He from Chicago. It'd come to me. Kurt Cobain. Co yeah, Kurt Cobain. Yeah. So they all stayed in that house. Um uh Rillis at the time, he's from Dallas. Rillis originally he was uh Tenetican. He was on above the Rim soundtrack. Mm -hmm. So Rillis was the artist, Kurt Cobain was a producer, Pooh was a security in the house. Um that's how I met Reg. Um when I first met Reggie, I told Reggie, listen, I'm here for whatever it got to be, but I really want to conduct some business. Mm -hmm. So Reggie gave me his phone number. And um, after going out a few times, a few situations happening on that side of it, a few conversations with Reg on the other side of it, um, he eventually um, put me on a three-way call with Shug. Okay. And uh, he told Shug, like, yo, man, we need this dude around. Mm -hmm. He brings both elements. He's a thinker. He bought his business. He got his own money. He ain't up here asking for a check. And, uh, you know, but he, he with the bullshit if we got to be. So that, he told Reg, well, shit, y'all keep it together. And, you know, when I get there, you know, we'll put it together. And that's how that came. Gotcha. So that came to be. So I had my own relationship with Suge, my own relationship with Reg. Uh, Pooh was actually an employee at Death Row. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I never wanted to put the chain on because... Once you put that chain on, you obligate it. Yeah. And uh, I'm more of a wolf type guy than a sheep. Gotcha. I want to come and go as I please, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it was great for the guys that had to do that. That just wasn't for me, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but he gave me the access. Me and Suge got very, very close. You know, children going to each other's homes, driving back and forth to Vegas. Uh, you know, um, thinking through things and thinking back on it, I see a lot of the mistakes he made. You know, it was amazing on how he was telling me he couldn't put the music out because he didn't have distribution. And I'm like, now, because he had did the, the deal with Koch where he sold half the Death Row catalog. Mm -hmm. So there's no way you could do this deal with Koch and not be able to negotiate distribution through Koch. But I think what it was, he wanted to be back with the big fish. Mm -hmm. Koch was independent back then. He wanted to be back with UMG up under that umbrella. And that's kind of what it was. And when that open door was open, his first six months out, mm -hmm. he should have took what was available and grew on that instead of trying to force it the way he was able to in the early 90s. Yeah. And I think that's where he made his mistake. Gotcha. Okay. Can you tell me about a time that, um, and Reggie told me about this, that you walked in, you and Suge walked in on Danny Boy and somebody else. He didn't say. Who. Danny Boy and, uh, I just seen him the other day. Uh, young Buck. Okay. Not Young Buck from G Unit. L.A. Buck. L.A. Buck, yeah. Okay. We had left and, um, Danny Boy did a lot of shit for Shug, like, you know, his personal shit, like, pick the kids up, shit like that. They had their own relationship. Right. And um, when we came back, we doubled back for something. And we went up to the penthouse. And uh, they was up there at 690. Yeah, they was, they was giving each other all sex. Mm. I know Young Buck, I just seen him the other day, you know, he all right with me, but the truth is the truth. Mm. Um, years after that, it came to me that he was about to, he was with my homegirl, Danny Boy. So I tried to warn my homegirl, like we grew up two houses from each other. So I called and like, yo, you can't do that. And like she was genuinely in love with him, you know. And I'm like, yo, you can't do that, dude. It ain't right. Mm -hmm. She got mad at me, told me I was hating mm -hmm. and not happy for her. And I'm telling her, like, yo, you can't do that. You can't do that. 
she cussed me out a little bit. She went on to marry him. They went to Atlanta. And a child was born. Everything seemed normal. Then one day, a tell-all book came out. And that's when she called me and said you was telling me the truth. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that definitely. But Danny, one thing about Danny, he, you know, he comfortable in the skin. Yeah. He, he don't care less. He, he gonna tell you what it is. Yeah. He comfortable in the skin. Um, actually, it's crazy. <laughs> I was at a barber shop and they was like, yo, whack, you ain't lying. Danny boy told us the dude got the best head in California. <laughs> yeah, Danny don't care. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't know when the last time you interviewed him, yeah. but Danny gonna speak his truth. And uh, he know a lot. He knows a lot of shit. Yeah. Cause he was around Shug a lot. And depending on who you were, mm -hmm. depending on how far in you was with Shug. Right. Some niggas was left outside. Danny boy was outside, inside. Mama house over here with the kids. You know, knew where that was at, this was at, that was at. So, you know, a lot of people question things he says, but uh, you know, Shug himself told me that him and Danny was real close. Mm 